God is good and all the time our friends with gratitude in my heart I welcome you to our service today here at New Life Church 5th Gong Avenue Nairobi Kenya I welcome all of you who are here physically uh, and I welcome you children of God who are following us or who are worshiping with us virtually. May the Lord bless all of us. We appreciate our visitors, each one and every one of you, especially the visiting choirs, Jericho. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. We start our evangelistic campaign today. Jesus saves evangelistic campaign starts today. Our speaker is Pastor Victor Banda from Zambia. Pastor Banda will be here on Monday because he has to take a COVID test before he comes. And uh, that was not possible earlier than today. This is the reason why we will be having him on Sunday. I stand here to cut and rice for him. I feel overwhelmed because his shoes are big shoes. I am trying to feed my small feet into the big shoes of the servant of the Lord, Pastor Victor Banda. I hope that I have your permission. Tomorrow we will continue and we will have Pastor J.P. Mayor uh, standing in for him. And then Pastor Victor Banda will take up in earnest from Monday when he arrives. Let us keep this meeting in the hands of God and pray that the Lord will bless us. And on account of these meetings, that souls will be saved in the kingdom of God. I am delighted, really, really grateful that we have been assisted by the leadership of the church, beginning with the South Nairobi Kajado field, our own field where we belong, our union, our division, the SID division where our pastor Banda comes from for facilitating the coming of our pastor. We as New Life Church are very, very grateful to the church leadership. We are proud to belong to this church, uh, which is mission-oriented, and it is quick to be able to facilitate anything mission matters. We are very, very grateful. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. Brethren, I welcome us to consider the word of God for curtain rising, curtain raising, uh, this evangelistic campaign from the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings, chapter number 5. We are reading verse number 1. <clears throat> verse number 1 to verse number 17, the word of the Lord says, 2 Kings, Verse 1 to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 17. But I will not read the whole chapter, for it is a long one. And repeatedly, my wife has told me, never read those long passages when you come before the children of God to preach. I have always struggled with heart. Let her know, you see, it is the basis of the word. And some people don't have their Bibles with them. So I need to give them the background so that they can be able to follow with the word of God. So I should go ahead. <laughs> ah, sweet, you are overruled today. <laughs> the Bible says, now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great 
and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him the Lord had given victory, prophet who is in Samaria, for he will heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus, says the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Neman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel pay, read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a life? That this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy. Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, had that the king of Israel had torn his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariots, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean but Naaman became furious and went away and said indeed I say to myself he surely he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave over the place and heal the leprosy. I'm not a banner and farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Go wash is the title of our sermon today. Shall we pray? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise your name for the grace and the blessings of having this opportunity to be in the audience of your word. We pray, dear Father, that the Holy Spirit who guided your servant to put down this account for the many generations, including us who live many years when it already happened, that he, the Holy Spirit, will bring us to its understanding. And we pray that the purpose for which it was written, the gems of revelation, the gems of admission and rebuke, the gems to redemption and freedom may be our portion even as we follow through this text in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture opens by saying that Naaman 
commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. In other words, the scripture is letting us know that the greatness of Naaman was on account of his accomplishments. He was a man of great accomplishment. Our people are called great for many reasons. You could be considered to be great on account of your physical stature, how you are built. But you can be physically strong, but be minimal in accomplishment. The Bible is not letting us know whether Naaman was of a physical strong stature. Uh, it is quite as far as that is concerned, but it lends us this information that he was great on the basis of his accomplishment. And because of his great accomplishment, he earned himself a name. He earned himself honor in the eyes of his king, the king of Syria. But this great man and a man of great accomplishment suffered from a very traded disease, leprosy. If it was in Israel, first they would begin to wonder whether his sin was on account of his leprosy, was on account of his sin, or on account of his parents' sins. It was believed in Israel that leprosy had a very strong relationship with sin. You probably will remember one day when Aaron and his sister Miriam were indignant. They were unhappy with their brother Moses. They complained against Moses. They harbored sin in themselves. And God struck uh, Miriam with leprosy. Based on this text and many other texts in the Bible, leprosy was viewed and seen to be an evidence of sinfulness. So if Naaman was in Israel, he would be considered to be a sinner very easily. No wonder they called themselves unclean. Not only physically were they clean and clean, but also spiritually unclean they were considered. You probably will also remember the story of the ten lepers who met Jesus in the New Testament in the book of Luke chapter 17. Jesus asked them to go and show themselves to the priests and while they were going, one of them noticed that he was well. When he returned, Jesus asked him what the ten, the other nine not claimed physical cleaning and also spiritual cleaning. It was considered so. He suffered from this disease. This disease, because of its physical uncleanness and because it was also made greater by the fact that it was infectious and one who suffered from it needed to be isolated from the rest of the community, needed to be put in quarantine, it was a viral disease as is corona a virus disease and as we have suffered from corona which now has gone out of the door and we praise God for this. Whoever suffered from it needed to be isolated. But allow me to let you know that this viral disease of Leprosy was in various stages. There were those who suffered from a mild form of it and could continue to mingle a little bit with the people. There are those ones who suffered from a very serious one and needed to be isolated. Whatever the case, if it was in Israel, if you are noted to have some tendencies of having a skin disease, it was actually branded leprosy and you are to be examined by the priests 
and it was necessary that you are isolated for seven days and you will be re-examined and see if it was getting better or bad. If it wasn't getting better, you will stay in quarantine for another seven days. We saw this during corona when those who were tested to be having corona isolated for 14 days, for 21 days, depending on the situation. But the Bible lets us know that Naaman was still going about his duties. Now, it were better, it would have been nice if you are great, you don't suffer from challenges like these ones of a dreaded disease, leprosy. In fact, all of us would like to be great. And one of the things that make us want to be great is the perception that if I am great, I am well favored, I have money, I can be able to access any medical attention. If I suffered from any disease, I can be attended medically and I will be well. It is even perceived that you should be well in all matters, but as all of us know, this is not true. Challenges of life face us whether we are great or small. And even though Naaman was a great mad man, he suffered from this problem. Now problems come our way. One, because we live in a world of sin. When sin came on this planet Earth, it came along with challenges that we will have to experience. Another reason why this happens, Jesus will say many times whenever people suffered from challenges that it was for the glory of God. You will probably remember uh, one day when Jesus was together with his disciples and uh, they came to the gate of Jerusalem to the temple and uh, they saw a man who was blind and he was understood to have been blind from his childhood. The apostles, the disciples asked Jesus, who is the reason for the blindness of this man? Is it his sin or his parents' sin? And Jesus, in answer in the book of John, chapter number 9 and verse number 2, says, it was neither the parents, nor this man himself, but that the name of God may be glorified. We may endure certain challenges sometimes, and God has his own way of glorifying himself in these challenges. Some of them and much of them which come probably as a natural occurrence, that God may be glorified in them. The Apostle Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7 says, he also suffered from something. He calls it a thorn in the flesh. And he offers that the reason why he had this disturbing thing in his flesh was to make, keep him humble. I don't know whether you have a challenge as we speak right now. As we consider leprosy that Naaman suffered from, it will be nice for us to appreciate the fact that if I am having a challenge, if you are having a challenge at the moment as you speak, either an illness or a relational challenge, work-related issues, one, it could be part and parcel of life. Two, God is going to glorify himself in your situation. And it, three, it could be that God has allowed it to be this way to keep some of us humble. I don't know the reason. For Naaman, we also do not know. But we praise God that there was a solution for Naaman. And this solution will be suggested to him by one girl who was working in his house. So whatever our problem might be, I suggest there is a solution. Praise the name of the Lord. Naaman was given a suggestion. 
And I'll be offering this suggestion also to all of us. You are free to consider taking advantage of this proposal or not. The freedom is ours. Now the Bible says that the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captives, captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. In those days, there were several raids. Tribes and even nations tried to enhance themselves by raiding under others and looting them. And also uh, blessing and helping themselves with cheap labor. So they will raid several places. Testimony of such raids, you will find them in the book of Samuel. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. Please quickly read with me. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse number 8. Many raids happened in those days. Uh, First Samuel chapter 30 and verse number 8, the Bible says, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. The Amalekites had attacked the children of Israel. They had raided the children of Israel. And this is a time when David uh, was king and he inquires of the Lord whether it was plausible, acceptable for him to go after these raiders. And God permitted him to go. In the book of Second Kings, this same um, Second Kings that we are reading, chapter number 13, just a little ahead of our chapter of consideration, Second Kings chapter 13 and verse number 21, uh, the Bible offers another evidence of raids that used to happen those days. So it was, as they were burying a man, that suddenly they spied a band of raiders, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was laid down and touched the, the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. This text also offers us an evidence of a raid. There are several evidences in the Bible of how many times Various countries and various tribes and various people groups raided others. And the real reason behind most of these raids was to enhance one's self as a country or as a tribe or as a people group to increase your economic power uh, by looting those whom you attack and also gaining cheap labor because when you had raided and you are taken captives of war, you will bring them in your own country and uh, they will be able to serve you and uh, serve you free without payment and you'll get cheap labor. So in similar circumstances, I can go on and on and on and read to you several texts of how various tribes and various nations and various people groups raided others to advantage themselves. But suffice to say that it was during such a raid that Syrians had raided the northern part of Israel. And during that raid, one of the people who were taken into captivity was a little girl. Of course, there were many who were taken out of their country and taken to Syria, and they would be sold in a slave market and the raiders will be able to get themselves some money. And those who bought the slaves uh, will have these slaves serve them for free. It looks like Naaman, being chief of the Syrian army, also either he had gone to this market and gotten himself one of the slaves, or having been probably the commander of this raid, 
he looked at the many of the war prisoners they had captured and uh, saw this girl and thought that she can be able to be a good servant in his house and brought her to serve to wait on his wife. The Bible only supplies for us this information that she had come as a captive, a young captive girl from the land of Israel and was waiting on Naaman's wife. She served in Naaman's home. This girl, the Bible lets us know in verse 3 that she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. The Bible lets us know that this girl, as she served in this Naaman's house, she observed that her master, Naaman, this great man who had earned himself a name in the eyes of his king and the entire Syria, was suffering from a dreaded disease. And she sympathized with him and went ahead to make a proposal not to Naaman, but to Naaman's wife, her mistress, and put it not as a command, but simply as a wish. I wish that my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he will be healed. Every time I have read this portion of the scripture, I have gotten mesmerized at the attitude of this girl. Because this girl being in this situation, I wonder that she could be what she could want to be of benevolence to her captor. Let us be honest, if I was the one in this situation, I am not sure that I will be in a position to wish well to one who has taken me from the freedom of my country and brought me as a war captive in his own country and now I'm serving as a slave. And serving as a slave in those times and sometimes even now is never, was never a sweet experience because you had no rights of your own. You did not belong to yourself. Everything that you had, including your own body, belonged to your master. You had no say. This girl had been taken from her country. She had lost the freedom that people enjoy in their own country. This is the reason why, brothers and sisters, we need to cherish peace. And we thank God that in our country, we enjoy peace. And we pray that this peace will abound forever and ever. Amen. For when there is no peace, it doesn't matter. You will leave your country. You will seek for asylum in another country. Either take yourself or you will be taken as a war captive, as it is happening in Ukraine. If you had money, you have to struggle in another country. And the worst case is to be taken into a refugee camp in that particular country. It's never a sweet experience. This girl had been taken from her own home country. No freedom now of playing around. She had been estranged from her own family. It is even possible that her father and her mother, her siblings probably were killed in this war because when these raids happened, a lot of people died. Houses were burned and lots of unacceptable things were done by the raiders. I don't want to mention some of them because you already know. She probably was a witness of these things. And now here she is, robbed away from the privilege of being an innocent child and play around with fellow children. Now she can't play. She must serve in Naaman's house without opportunity probably to play sufficiently with her fellow children. Instead of being in school, she was serving. She had lost everything that is desirable to anyone. Freedom of your own country, estranged from one's own parents, 
not knowing where the siblings were either killed or also had run to other countries or something like that. And here she was, a war prisoner and uh, enslaved and serving as a captive in this man's house. Surely, if I was the one, I would not want to, want to be of benevolence to this man who probably was the commander of the raiders who raided our country, burned the houses of our houses and demolished and destroyed our country. I will want to have nothing to do with this man. But this girl mesmerizes me and instead of pity patting her situation, instead of mourning her deplorable condition, she extended benevolence. Instead of being bitter, she was better. She actually had nothing, no resources on herself, but she was very resourceful. Praise the name of the Lord. The attitude of this girl stands as a rebuke to any one of us who when we get into difficult situation, we begin to pity party and mourn our deplorable situations. Deplorable situations and difficult situations come in life. This girl shows us a better way that when it comes, it is not time to be ecocentric and self-centered and think about your own good only, but to be selfless and begin to reach out to the predicaments of other people. This is what this girl offers for us. It is no time to pity party. It is time to think about the suffering others are going through. And so she offers to her mistress, I wish that my master was with the prophet who is in Samaria. Promise me, brothers and sisters, that you will not pity party. No pity partying anymore. No mourning our situation. No being preoccupied with our situation. We will be rather occupied by our environment and what is happening there and looking and offering solutions to those who are challenged. Praise the name of the Lord. As I say this, I am happy to see my elder Omandi here, who is always offering solutions to many of the challenges that we face. Our brothers and sisters, problems come to everyone, anyone, and they will come. And when they do, and you find yourself in this situation, no time for pity party. Will you promise me you will not pity party? You will not be preoccupied with yourself, but you will look around and see somebody else who is troubled and uh, offer a solution to this particular person. And I will suggest to you, it is in finding solutions to those ones who are in challenges that fulfillment of life comes and healing comes your way, praise the name of the Lord. You have been beaten hard. You are bitter. You have every justification to be bitter. Of course I know. I have been in this situation before. When you feel you have every justification to be bitter. And when you are bitter, you, the Holy Spirit of God, cannot operate in your life. And the solution, the medicine to this difficult situation that will bring healing to your bitterness is to look around and see somebody See a situation that needs a solution which you can be able to offer. Give that solution. As you see help coming, your healing will come. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so this girl says, I wish that my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. Our friends, allow me to observe that the reason why Israel loses its independence and its citizens are taken into captivity, the northern kingdom of Israel, is because of their constant stay in sin. 
God, after the nation of Israel has split into two, and the northern kingdom, under the leadership of the first king, Jeroboam, guided them into idolatry, disintegrated into idolatry. And God sent them many prophets. These prophets will include Elijah and Elisha, whom this girl is talking about. And they will include Hosea and Amos and Jonah. But Israel will not hear. Israel will not listen. They gave themselves to idolatry. They were false prophets. People would rather follow the false prophets than follow the prophets of God. And God is a freedom-giving God. He gave them their freedom. Please read with me. First Kings chapter 12. And verse 28. First Kings chapter 12 and verse 28. The Bible says, Therefore the king asked advice, made two calves of gold, and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. This is King Jeroboam introducing idolatry in the northern kingdom, the worship of idols, golden calves put one in Bethel and another one in Dan. And uh, idolatry will begin in the northern kingdom. And as this continues, the Bible will let us know that God considered these people. And in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 81 verse 13. Psalms 81 verse 13. Psalms 81 verse 13. As we are looking for Psalms 81 verse 13, allow me to observe and to mention that this northern kingdom, evidence of idolatry will be seen in the time when one prophet, this same prophet Elisha, who will be talked about by this girl, is walking from, from Jericho to Bethel and he's climbing a hill. He was bald headed. And the Bible says that there were 42 young men who saw him and they had heard that Elijah, it had been said and reported in the news channel of Israel that Elijah had been flown by chariots of fire. And they made fun of that news and said, ah, we don't believe you prophets who claim to be prophets of God. We really don't believe you. If it is true that Elijah went to heaven, go up, thou bald head, and say it to Elisha. If it is true, you also go, and we will be able to believe. And the Bible says Elisha turned around, and he cast those boys, 42 of them. A research of, about these boys offers that these were not just boys, but they were students in a false prophet school. It had gotten to that bad situation where Israel even had schools for false prophets where they taught sorcery, magic, divination, and all sorts of things. And these boys were students in this school making fun of the prophet of God. It had gotten to this level. And so in Psalms 81, Psalms 81 and verse number 13. Are you there with me? The Bible says, verse 13, all that my people will listen to me, that Israel will walk in my ways. I will soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against the adversaries. The haters of the Lord will pretend submission to him, but their fate will endure forever. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock, I would have satisfied them. God is complaining and saying that he had made every effort to be the God of these children of Israel and provide for them and protect them and fight for them their wars. He says if they had allowed him, he would have fought for them their enemies, but they had refused God. And because God is a gentleman, he does not force himself on anyone 
He, when you say, I, have, I want to have nothing to do with you, he will allow you to have your way. And as he exited, they were left exposed to attacks and they were attacked by the Syrians. Of course, this was just a small attack. Later on, they will be attacked by the Assyrians who will take them completely into exile and this nation will completely be lost. Brothers and sisters, I want to observe this as I say this. This girl grew up in Northern Kingdom Israel at a time when there was rampant idolatry. It amazes me that she is speaking about the prophet of God who is in Samaria. It tells me that whereas there were many people in Israel who had swung towards idolatry, there were also some, there were some people in Israel who revered God, who families who revered God and who guided their children accordingly. This girl, Ellen G. White, in her book, Patriarchs, not Patriarchs, but Prophets and Kings, offers that she had come from such a family where children had been taught to trust in God, had been taught to believe in the prophet and you will be established. No wonder she makes this proposal, I wish that my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. He will be healed of his leprosy. What a beautiful thing, brothers and sisters, when we remain faithful to God. When we do that and we, we are able to hand over this to our little children, even though atrocities may come their way, they will remain a resourceful people. They will remain to be a hopeful people. Because in her statement she says, you will probably think, having been a war captive and now serving as a slave, she will be hopeless. But she's not hopeless. You are wrong. She says, if my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he will be well. Meaning that she looked forward to a time when things can become well. When we have trained our children in the right path, and we have introduced them to God. Even though they may be taken away from us, they will be, number one, a hopeful people. People who know that even though circumstances may be difficult, apparently, they cannot remain like this forever. For there is a God who rules out the world and who brings good at its time. This girl had been, had, had been brought up in such a family and she exhibits her trust in God. She is hopeful and she is resourceful. Praise the name of the Lord. We must therefore, those of us who are parents, however busy this world may be and those of us who live in the city, however busy the city might be and takes our time, we must create time with our children every day on daily basis to read with them the word of God that introduces them the, the living God who brings hope even in a hopeless situation and who makes people resourceful even when they have nothing to offer. Praise the name of the Lord. And now, when Naaman heard this, that he could find help in Samaria, he did not waste his time. He quickly went to his king, sought for permission to go to Samaria, and the king, being in love with his commander of his army, gave him permission, and even went ahead and wrote a letter to the Israeli king so that he can be assisted. Naaman arrives, and the king tows his clothes. He says, look, these people are looking for a reason again to attack us, but the news goes around, and Elisha gets to hear that the king tore his clothes. And what does Ne, uh, Elisha say, send him to me. So he's brought to Elisha. And Elisha tells the man, go wash in Jordan seven times and you will be well, you'll be cleaned. And the man is like, hmm, no. First, I thought this man will come out and as a prophet, you know, like the magicians would do. You know, they are very... Uh, at the, the, uh, how would you call it? You know? 
drama. They will do a lot of drama around you, even when it is, it is empty, it has nothing. And you believe that sin he has done like that, healing will come. So Naaman complains, I thought this man will come and wave his hand of power over me. But he has not even come to me. He has not recognized the type of person that I am. He simply sent a servant to come and attend to me. I am not happy. And I thought, how can he tell me to go and bathe in Jordan? That dirty river is in the rivers of Damascus. Rivers of Syria. Better rivers. Farper and Abana. Cleaner. And it is true. River Jordan is a very dirty river. I had the privilege with the blessings of my friends Brogibro company of tours to go to Israel and baptize people in this river. It's very dirty. And uh, with a lot of tadpoles. I remember when I was in the water, I kept on, there are things which were biting me as I waited for the candidates to come for baptism. So to save myself from their bite, I had to keep on jumping like this to detract them from biting me. Indeed, I confirm that River Jordan is dirty. Naaman was speaking the truth. I thought, if it is a question of bathing, I will go and bathe in Abana and Farpal. But excuse me, uh, Brother Naaman. And there are many Brother Naamans in this world who want to have the kingdom of God in their prescription. They want to have it the way they wish, the way it is comfortable for them. No wonder these days we have many denominations and many religions. And all of us claim we are preparing people to go to heaven. But all of us know that some are careful to follow the word of God and others are follow those things that are conducive. But they will have nothing whatsoever with things that they think are not conducive. They will keep away from them. This is the attitude of Naaman. But Naaman will come to understand that if healing will come his way, he has to follow God's instructions. God's way is the only one. And so he is angry and he lives to go. His servants go to him and tell him, Master, in fact, they call him Father. If the prophet had told you to do a great thing, probably to give billions of shillings, wouldn't you have given? Because we know that you have the ability. These servants were wonderful servants. They knew how to deal with their bosses. They appreciate him and they call him Father. You know, you must learn how to deal with people. <laughs> you must know people. And they prevail on him. Please go and bathe. And Naaman obliges. In this story of Naaman, there's a wonderful in the play of servants. The proposal to go to Samaria is from a servant. The push to go and bear, the, 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 the instruction to go to Jordan is handed over to a servant to tell Naaman. The insisting to get into the water and bed, it is by the servants. Allow me to simply say this. This has to do with the pride of human beings. If people will be lost, it will be an account of pride. But those who will learn the good habit of humility will be healed and will prosper. Amen. So my brother, if you feel yourself very great and sometimes you feel proud, allow me to propose to you it has no place for prosperity and for healing. Those who will find healing and who will be established are just people who are willing to be guided by a nobodies of this world. 
The servant is the one who had made the proposal. I am grateful that Naaman was a wise man, was clever, and he accepted to be guided by his servants. There are not very many of us who will be guided by servants. Mothers, are you here? Can you be guided by your household? Eh? Tell me the truth. Very few of us will want to listen to those house helps. But in this story, we are told that help came from just who? A servant. It is a rebuke towards being big-headed. There's no big head for those who will look for healing, especially the total healing that comes from heaven. We must just learn to be humbled and accept the way of God. However unacceptable it might be for us, it is the way that delivers salvation. And so Naaman accepts to be guarded by the girl. He accepts to be guarded by Gehaz. He accepts to be guarded by his lieutenants, the servants, and probably Elomandi. This could have been some of the war prisoners who had been uh, contracted to attend to ne Neman. A possibility, I'm not very sure. But he accepts to be guided by them. And he, with humility, he gets into the water and he washes and the Bible says he came out clean. Jesus, in the book of Luke, chapter 4 and verse 17, will say something in regard to this story that we read here. Uh, will you please read with me? Luke 4, 27, not 17. Luke is found where? In the New Testament. Have you found it? Luke 4. We are reading Luke 4, 27. Don't read 17. The Bible says, and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When Jesus was speaking this, he was speaking in regard to the Jews. He was speaking to the Jews who felt nice about themselves because they were sons of Abraham, descendants of Abraham, and whose perception was that on the basis of their descent from Abraham, descent from Abraham, salvation and being a priest of God and being rulers was obvious. Jesus tells them, be careful. There are many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha. None of them was believed, was healed, except this Naaman, who was not even a Jew, on hearing about the prophet of God, on believing he was healed. Jesus is submitting, he's offering that healing comes to those who are able to believe who are able to be humble and to accept, to walk by the demands of God, the instructions of God. We may have our way we wish things to go. We may have our preferred way of going to heaven, but God says the only way of going to heaven is but one, by faith in Jesus Christ. And that those who belong to Jesus Christ have fruits of belonging to him. They also observe his command. Commandments. There are many busy people in this world who believe in Jesus Christ difficult, in a difficult way, let me put it that way. But they are reluctant to walk in some of the instructions of God. God will have them all rebuked. And God will have us know that God's way is God's way. Hallelujah. Amen. You are here and you are saying, like Naaman, I want to be one of those Naamans. The only ones who, who were advantaged by the prophet who was in Samaria, while others were not being advantaged by healing because they did not believe. For healing will come to those who believe. And you are saying, I also believe. 
as Naaman believed. This thing of being tough-headed and demanding my own way of doing things, I stop and I humble myself to accept God's way. And that is the way I want to go. And you are here and you have come for this evangelistic campaign. And the word of God will be preached. And you are saying, please, Lord, help me to believe. Some of the things I may hear may not be according to what I have always perceived. But if that is your word, I'll accept it. Naaman accepted your way from your servant, Elisha. And he was cleansed. He was made whole. And I also want to be cleansed. I want to be made whole. You're here and you're saying, like Naaman, I will believe. I will not be stiff-necked. I am not going to be proud. I will not insist on my own way. I want to believe the word of God the way it is. If this is your prayer, let me see you by a show of hand. Shall we rise up for a word of prayer? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for leaving this account behind for us to be guided. For standing here are many of your children who will not be advantaged like the characters that we find in this account. Many of us will not be like this little girl who turned out to be a benefactor to, his, to her captor, who instead of being bitter, was better, and who, though she had very little to offer, was very resourceful, refused to be self-centered, and became selfless. We stand on our feet, dear Father, praying that you will help us to be like this girl. That from this day forward, no more pity party. No more being self-centered. No more mourning our deplorable situation. But rather, Lord, we will look around and seek to help others who could be having challenges. We are guided to understand that it is in doing this that indeed fulfillment of love and even this, the emotional healing and even the physical and spiritual healing kicks in. May this be our experience. Naaman suffered from a dreaded disease, leprosy. We suffer from a worst disease of sin. Naaman humbled himself, accepted to be advised by just a maid, to be guarded by Gehaz, the servant of the prophet, to be prevailed on by his own lieutenants, his servants. Father, we are a proud people who will not listen to those who are, whom we perceive to be less and no people. Help us with the spirit of humility. And we also pray that you help us with the spirit to follow your instruction, even though it is not what we will really have wished. Even though it is not as we would have wanted things to be, for your word is your word. Help us to take your word the way it is. When it says Sabbath is Sabbath, help us to follow you and not to create our own Now, Lord, may you bless us as we enjoy this evangelistic campaign that has started today here for the two weeks. Grant us the grace to come. Grant us the grace, Lord, to bring our friends. And we pray that our coming will not be in vain, that our lost souls will be saved in your kingdom. And our friends who are still in the darkness of this world who are in the bondage of sin, will find freedom and be brought into your marvelous light. And the comfort and the hope and joy that is for those who belong in thy fault of safety. 
that through this campaign, your children will be drawn to you and stayed in you the rest of their lives. May this be our experience. For we pray and trust in Jesus' name. Amen.